Okay, continuing on here. Front wheel drive vehicles are more susceptible to uh, mount failure uh, because they have a tendency to move more. If you think about it, when we have a front wheel drive car, when we accelerate, the engine is rotating back and forth uh, between the grill and the firewall or bulkhead. And um, it, unlike a, a longitudinally mounted engine, we actually have to try to cushion that uh, with a little bit softer mounts than we would with a longitudinal mounted engine. And uh, if you would actually take the hood off your car sometime, not recommended, and then uh, watch your engine, I think you would be surprised on how much that engine is moving back and forth compared to a longitudinal motor. So what happens is we have to have softer rubber in the mount uh, where it's cantilevered, or uh, in some cases cantilevered, and then uh, as soon as it starts to move uh, during acceleration, we send it against a torque limiter. So what happens is uh, seems like front wheel drive cars have a tendency to have um, uh, fa higher failure rates uh, or uh, replacement rates on mounts than we would with uh, longitudinally mounted design uh, engines. Uh, in fact, if you notice this one here, if you look right down here at the bottom, we've got a a strut. Uh, we, we also referred to that in the past when I worked for General Motors as a dog bone mount because it was kind of shaped like a dog bone. Uh, had two large ends at the at the sides with rubber in it. That that was designed to allow it again to cushion uh, when we were in park neutral. Uh, when we went into drive it would move somewhat but then when we would put you know the the torque on that motor uh, for acceleration that that would limit the amount of movement and therefore uh, attempt to save the mounts from being destroyed. Believe it or not, uh, we've gone a, come a long way as far as uh, mounts are concerned. We actually have mounts that have oil in them for cushioning. So if you notice here, we've got hydraulic fluid on the top side. We've got rubber mounts up above. We have a diaphragm in between with a... Uh, air dampening chamber down below and just as you would imagine it would work it does work very well in cushioning and we see this on a lot of our luxury cars um, but what happens is they can also fail and when they fail they end up uh, causing leaks as you see here so this uh, hydraulic mount has actually failed uh, I remember the first time I saw a hydraulic mount I actually thought uh, the front uh, dampener seal or the front crank seal of the engine was leaking. I went up and sold a crank seal to the customer and then came back and found out as I was pulling down the mount to get to the crank seal that the seal was not leaking at all. It was just a mount, a hydraulic mount that had failed. So we went back, uh, changed the estimate to uh, no replacement of the seal and a replacement of the mount instead. Again, this is uh, kind of what I saw. This looked like it was leaking down from the front of the motor. But again, in actuality, it was not the seal. It was the mount that was leaking. Believe it or not, uh, we get even uh, crazier with mounts. Uh, there are computer-controlled mounts. Notice the, the wire pigtails that come out of the mount. They can actually change the amount of cushioning uh, that the engine... Uh, mounts uh, perform uh, as changes occur to throttle position. So as we change the load on the engine, we can actually change the way that those mounts support. But again, imagine the price to replace some of these. I, they might have come down in price, but I remember some of the first ones that I uh, saw that had failed and they were being replaced. They were upward of $500, pushing $1,000 for a single mount. Not, not, maybe not this one here, but these were from the manufacturer. No aftermarket parts were available, and the parts were very expensive. If you really care about my personal opinion, I would say that uh, uh, simplicity is best. <laughs> 
I think I'll stop this video here and then start it a new with shift linkage.